Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. This video I'm going to be talking about a very interesting article which was published by Mr. Gauri Balasubram on 10th of July 2017 Dynamo DB streams use cases and design pattern. Let's talk more about what I mean by that. So as you know, right, Dynamo DB has a feature where you can essentially relay the change events, right? For example, any new item has been added, you could essentially relay those event for further processing. So here the author is trying to show different models and architecture on how you could leverage, you know, uh, Dynamo DB and uh, with other components. So let me, I am going to show you a demo promise, as I said. So there are a couple of ways uh, in which you could do this, right? So I am more a visual person, so I like to show things uh, to you, right? So over here, as you can see, right, uh, you have Amazon, uh, yeah, DynamoDB streams, right? You, you could enable that and you could click on new image. You could say enable stream and then uh, you could essentially fire up a Lambda function, which I will show you in a second. Yeah, so you can create a trigger and then you could essentially, you know, um, what I said uh, is uh, write a lambda function. So every time an item is added to Dynamo, a lambda would be fired. So, but the this downside of this model is, you know, with this approach, if you do that, if there are a lot many requests coming into the Dynamo, your lambdas might throttle. It's a great way, but there are other ways also you could leverage um, Dynamo DB streams, uh, right? So here the author says, you know what? Uh, you could also connect a kinesis by the way so you could have all those events in a kinesis data stream from the data stream you could uh, connect a fire hose the fire hose can connect to amazon redshift and then you can build dashboard using quicksight on the top or you can put it to s3 for archiving purposes you know then run athena on the top of that glue crawler so you could do that approach but if you want something really fast and blazing, you can opt for AWS Elasticsearch or OpenSearch. FireOS directly natively int integrates with Elasticsearch. For example, let's say you have a need of um, you know notification on that uh, real-time data. If something happens, you wanna you know do something, right? So in those scenarios, right, you could publish those messages back. Um, so from the Kinesis data stream, you could fire up Lambda functions and push the messages to the SNS, right? Uh, in the SNS, you could have multiple subscribers or you could, you know, based on a condition, you could, based on the condition on the Lambda, uh, you could fire up an event to the SNS and you can receive email notification or further uh, downstream application can process this data, right? So a lot of use cases there, right? So let me show you how easy it is, right? I, I was able to build this in matter of seconds, right? So uh, first of all, what I'll do is, uh, you know what, I really want to make a whole new one. So, um, you know, uh, so I'm using PynamoDB. I have a complete tutorial on PynamoDB, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to create a table called table YouTube, okay? I'm defining my user schema. This has email, job, first name, last name, company. My last name is my um, hash key or partition key. First name is the range key or composite key or however you want to call, right? Or short key. Right. And then I'm essentially creating a table with four uh, RCUs and WCUs. Now you guys know one RCU is four kilobytes, one WCU is one kilobytes. We, we have know that, we have studied that, right? Um, so now I'm gonna create a table here, as you can see. Now, if I go back to my console, I should have a table here in a second. So as you can see, table YouTube is there, right? Now, what I wanna do is anytime I push any messages to the Dynamo, I wanna have it to an S3, right? For example, I'm, 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 I'm taking that uh, edge case, right? So now what I can do is I can come to my streams and I can come here and say, I'm gonna create a Dynamo streams. I'll leave it to on demand, right? So I'll, I'll click on a create stream. So now it's creating my stream, right? So now I can go to my table YouTube. I can head over to exports and streams right and then i can click on here which says enable and then i can select my dynamo stream right um, you can configure the retention period based on however you like i'm using four shard counts right now and i'll click on enable stream so at this point my uh, kinesis data stream is ready now i just need to create my fire hose right so i'll click on create delivery system i'll say from this is gonna be from a data stream uh, the destination could be Redshift, OpenSearch, S3, or a custom HTTP endpoint, 
or even Datadog if you need, or or if you want to further do something, you can put it to Splunk or Sumo Logic, whatever, XYZ. For now, I'll show you an S3, which, okay. So remember, you can have multiple Firehoses, right, as I said. Uh, so I'll, I'll put it to S3. Now here I'll say, oh wait, what did I do? Wait, 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 I think I, I, I need to go to the delivery stream, hold on one sec. So I am on the delivery stream right now, right? So I'm gonna, I need to now link my data stream. So I'm gonna click here and I'll say Kinesis data stream, destination is gonna be S3. Ah, come on. Uh, yeah, perfect, that's good. So the source setting, now I can browse, uh, is gonna be my Dynamo streams. That's the one that I created, right? Uh, then I can name this here, you know, uh, whatever you want to give. Now, in my previous Kinesis tutorial, you know that you could apply Lambda transformation on that, which means whenever a batch of records are coming from Dynamo through data streams and Firehose, you can filter down or you can process these uh, item in batches essentially using a Lambda. So you have the ability to do that if you want to create partitions dynamically, you could do that. I have a video separately for that. So that's data transformation, right? Uh, we'll leave that to default, uh, record type conversion. Again, I'm gonna leave that to default destination here. I'll select my bucket, right? And I'll select my data, right? Whatever prefix you wanna give. You could, um, you know, compress the data. You could, uh, you know, tweak the settings based on your need. I'll, I'm simply gonna create this one. So at this point, as you can see, my delivery stream is being created at this point, right? So hopefully, will take a couple of seconds and then my Kinesis data stream and delivery stream is set up, right? So now, uh, hopefully, uh, it takes a while. Oh, your delivery stream was not created. Not sure why, maybe I missed some settings. Not sure, but I'll, I'll, I'll review there in a second, let's see. Okay, maybe some glitch on the <laughs> UI, but. All right, so what we did from the architecture from Mr. Subramaniam is, uh, we have a DynamoDB where you're inserting data, the applications are inserting data, we have a stream connected to the data stream through Firehose and th then through S3. Then we can run Athena, standard, same, you know, uh, same thing, right? We could run Athena on the top of that. So now, um, coming back here and I'm gonna insert data, I'm in inserting 20 items, uh, right? or I can insert 40 items. I'm inserting a lot of data at a very rapid rate, as you can see in Dynamo, it's really about 40 milliseconds, very, very super fast, right? So that's that. Now, coming back to the Dynamo, uh, remember the YouTube table, come to explore, and of course I have all my data back here, as great. Now, if I go to the S3, uh, you know, I have, so this is my bucket, uh, 1995, and here you can see my data, and it's nearly partition hour, month, uh, day and then you have our partition and then you have these files inside that you could download these files these are standard you could enable compression if you want but I, I, I usually like to use AWS glue workflow to essentially do some post processing based on data so now I can come here on this file right click click on notepad plus plus and I can show you the data as you can see uh, you know uh, Oh, God, it's a little hard to see. So as you can see, that, that's my data, you know, um, uh, you know, of course. Uh, but if you want uh, an ability to separate this data on a new line character, which means if you want multiple JSON, you could enable Lambda transformation, right? So I can show you that. I just want to show you the data quickly. So there are a lot of options uh, you can use, right, with Dynamo. It goes pretty flexible, right? So uh, as you can see, right, all, all the data, event source, he has everything, right? It's coming very straight from the Dynamo, right? So as you can see, um, you know, table name, the learn, whatever the table name is, right? DynamoDB, then you have your keys, right? Uh, last name and first name, right? Last name is my partition, first name is my secondary, uh, sort key, right? Uh, and this is the entire new image, right? Uh, the name, whatever, you know, then you have essentially full name, blah, 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 whatever data I sent, right? This is the company, email, last name, job, first name, whatever XYZ, you got the idea, size in bytes. Remember DynamoDB, you cannot insert data more than 400 kilobytes. The row size cannot exceed more than 400 KB. So now as you can see, it was very easy for me to create this architecture, right? I could connect it to my S3 through Redshift, have QuickSight, have glue crawler run on that, run Athena on that, all sort of amazing stuff you can do. But uh, now remember, if you wanna, 
uh, if you want this data to be filtered, right? If you want to have a nice clean JSON, you could have a Lambda transformation. So on on a FireOS, you have a setting where you can enable Lambda transformation. I haven't done that, but if you need that ability, you could easily do that. I had a separate video where I showed you that, right? But uh, yeah, the, that's essentially in a nutshell about um, DynamoDB stream use cases and design pattern, right? Uh, you could easily leverage the use of Kinesis, right? Then FireOS and then deliver it to multiple destination. Uh, for notification purposes, you could uh, have Lambda triggers on Kinesis data stream. Based on a condition, you could invoke essentially, uh, or you could publish a message to SNS so an alert would be sent out, right? So all this real-time system, right, you could do. Uh, one suggestion I could offer is when you could uh, opt for a dispatch model when you are invoking Lambda from Kinesis data stream because if there are a lot of right items, uh, your Lambda might throttle. So what you want to do is you want to just take the data and put it on an SQSQ and then you want to have a consumer that is polling the queue on a leisurely place and taking the documents from there. And if there's any condition, then you can easily invoke an SNS um, and then you know email alerts and all of that, right? Uh, but as I said, you could do a lot more. Uh, if you don't want to opt for Kinesis, if you have a very simple application, a simple Lambda trigger would work for your use case, right? So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed a sm simple walkthrough on DynamoDB and uh, Kinesis, right? Uh, and if you have any more questions, list your question in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you. I'll leave the links in the description so you can read more about it. Once again, keep smiling. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back in the next video.